Hey everyone, and welcome to my new LP. Oh, that is really loud. Let me turn that down. Hang on a second. I should have checked my volume before I started, but you know me, I'm a fucking idiot. So this is a game called Threads of Fate. We're going to start a new game here. And there are two completely different characters you can choose from. You could be a mysterious boy, you could be a spunky girl, and you know me, I'm such a spunky girl. But I'm actually going to start with Rue's story, for reasons that are going to make sense, I guess, as the game goes along. Uh, oh my god, what is that disgusting floating sperm thing? Is the floating around with a big jack-o'-lantern mouth? So, the reason I'm starting with Rue's story is because the, like, the sequence of events that happens in this game is roughly similar, but the two different characters that you play experience the game from radically different perspectives, and the story ends up being really different depending on who you, uh, who you pick. So we're this guy, Rue, and there's our girlfriend or whatever. Her name is Claire. She's a woman. She's a pretty woman. But that's not why we love her. We love her because she's nice, right? Because that's how things work in these games. You always fall in love with the nice person, and it just so happens that the nice person happens to be the most beautiful. Because if you look evil, then you have to be evil. And if you look ugly, you have to be uh, evil, too. I almost said you have to be ugly. Jeez. It's actually, uh, you know... Kind of, kind of interesting. So we can just like run around in circles and jump. We just have to wait for her to prepare dinner for us. That's literally all we're doing. And I love the fact that we can like jump our own height. You know, video game physics, right? So, <laughs> so like, what is he eating there? The first time I played this game, I thought that there was no food. Like the plate is off to the side of him, and it didn't make sense. I've, the first time I played this game actually was well I didn't see this cutscene the first time I played this game because I only played the demo I never owned this game but you know the story is pretty fast paced at the start or well I should not maybe that's not the best way to say it there's there's a pretty this game is pretty dialogue heavy so I'm gonna have to save my stories for uh for I guess the more intense moments of the game don't worry it's probably just a wolf or something so I actually had to download an entirely new emulator, because without it, the game froze up right here, and it just would not go to the next part, so... So apparently the animals are all freaked out. It last. Wait, what? Whoa! Oh, that is just creepy disgusting. Look at that hand! It's like, the size of- it's bigger than his body! Ugh! Oh, oh. That's just gross! So we're fighting this guy for no adequately explained reason, other than he looks evil because he's all, like, black and he's got a giant creeper hand. It's like, ugh, just the way the fingers are moving, it's just so disturbing. Oh my god. Uh, uh, I don't think that's going to stop him. So, uh, she's trying to help us out here. But obviously, uh, this is probably not going to end very well. With that, oh, that hand is just so disgusting. Ugh. No. Yeah. So, uh, she died, and that's kind of like what happened at the start of Rue's story. And so Rue's story ends up being very serious and emo. He's an angsty emo kid, and he's trying to find this thing called a relic to save his girlfriend, and it's been three years, and he has no idea where the relic is. It's really weird, because the rel- like, whenever they talk about the relic, they always put it in, like, brackets, or parentheses, or whatever, so, it's crazy. Anyway, we got these two butt munches over here, Smokey and the Bandit, well, actually, the other guy's name is Blood. Ha, <laughs> I guess my brother Blood always comes through. Nice. No, <laughs> Keep your voice down, butthead. Alright, listen up. Legendary church. God, he looks so fucking derpy. I'm mean, just, just like with the the half like the lopsided grimace and just like his face looks squashed, you know. So apparently they're also looking for this thing, this relic that the magician made. 
How the hell should I know? It's legendary. Oh, yeah, probably something big. Oh, yeah. So, uh, obviously, they're, uh, they're kind of bad guys. Because, you know, they look ugly, therefore they must be evil, right? And apparently there's this... What? We're gonna crash. So I guess something big crashed into our ship. That sucks. We all seem to be okay, though. I'm saying, I mean, I guess. So, you know, who, re who really cares, right? We're all okay. We're all okay here. Oh, what the heck was that? So, uh, I am not very good at voice acting. I guess I'll try to, like, do some voices for the characters and stuff like that, but... <laughs> don't expect anything good. You know, I'm not even gonna read all the dialogue. I'll just read out the parts that are good. Welcome to Corona! So there's this guy here. Oh, hello. How you doing? The name's Davis. I wear an orange bandana, and I work at the docks. My wife doesn't love me. But that's okay, because my orange bandana does. You better watch out for those assholes. These fucking sketchy ass... Assholes. <laughs> Looks like they're up to no good. They're hoodlums. As a matter of fact, everybody in this game calls them hoodlums. I guess that's just how the translation happened. It's funny, because, like, going through this game, you'll notice that everybody has really, really big feet. Just everybody. That's just, like, how the characters are modeled. And you know what they say about people with big feet. So, anyway, you can kind of explore a town. Town is very small, and it doesn't have very many people. Um, but we'll kind of get to some of this stuff later. I mean, this is, like, really the main town area. There's a, there's a back alley over there. There's the docks where we just were. Ooh, a coin. Coins actually, uh, they let you continue if you die. And bronze coins will bring you back with a quarter of your magic. But we'll get to that in a second. So unlike a lot of other RPGs, because this is an RPG, but it's really more like an action RPG. It plays more like uh, Kingdom Hearts, I guess you could say. Or like Secret of Mana if the game wasn't terribly glitchy and impossible to play. So you press circle to jump, just like that, and you can press X and triangle to attack. Now, the two characters end up playing the game quite differently, too. So if you kill monsters as Ryu, you can collect these monster tokens, and they let you uh, transform into monsters, which is cool. So, and you do that by, you know, by going through the tutorial, hold down the square button and choose the polywog, the, you know, the sperm monster. So you can turn into the monster. And each monster has its own different set of attacks and whatnot. And you can always turn back into Rue. And usually I just like to, you know, fight as Rue just because, it, you know, he's fast and maneuverable and just easy to play the game as, so that's kind of cool. Now this actually, this part of the game is actually the demo. And that's how I know this game. Kitty, go away. Dude, get out of here asshole. So, yeah, I played the demo of this game a lot as a kid. I never actually owned it. And honestly, the reason that I never, like, got it or anything like that was because I could never remember what this game was called. And I think we, like, my parents looked for it once, and they just couldn't find it because it's such, like, an obscure game. So, I mean, like, if you don't know this game, if you've never heard of this game, you are not alone. I think very few people have, except maybe, like, the biggest fans of, of Squaresoft, so... Okay, got a little cutscene happening in the next area. We're walking through this, uh, through this place right... <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, hey, look, it's those assholes. Oh, please let me go! Oh, oh, come on, baby, we ain't gonna hurt you. We just want a little food, that's all. We haven't eaten for two days, you know. Yeah, got no money for dinner either. <laughs> so they're like mugging this poor girl here. And uh, we, well, we're the hero, and that means we must save her. So what the game actually wants you to do is turn into a polywog. A sperm monster, you know, as a disguise. So that way you can uh, come over here, and these assholes are just like, eh, just fucking ignore this thing. So we're gonna, we'll show them. The hell? Let's get them! So, let's turn back into Rue and kick their asses. And you can, like, do jump attacks and stuff. And just combo them. Combo their asses. And eventually, if you do enough damage to them... Wow! 
I did that without taking a hit. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often as a Rue, I'll tell you that. So we just chase them away. And we look all heroic and triumphant and breathing heavily, I guess. I don't know. That's just kind of the way that the character models work in this game. Rue always looks like he's breathing heavily. Thank you, Polly! Wow, you can turn into a person, too! Oh, no, I'm not a Pollywog. I'm not a sperm monster. But, but I saw you when you came out. You were a sperm monster! That was just a disguise to catch them off guard. My name isn't Polly, it's Rue. Okay, your name is Rue at... You dumb bitch! No! That's... Ugh. You dumb bitch. So this is Elena. She's kind of a dumb bitch, but I think she's supposed to be, like, a kid or something like that. It's hard to tell because everybody looks so young when you, you know, make them anime characters. So... She's gonna go and look for her parents, who apparently went into this forest, like, five days ago and haven't come back. So obviously, you know, let's just go in after them without having any idea where they are into this big expanse of, oh, maybe I am a monster. So emo. Such an emo kid. Oh my god. So uh, we just have to follow her because she somehow knows the right way to go. And this screen doesn't have any enemies or anything like that, so... Part of the reason that I like the, this game's demo so much, well, two reasons. First of all, it was long. We're still in the demo section of the game, actually, and the demo ends with a boss fight. Actually, the very first boss fight in the game, and I just thought it was fun to play, especially compared to, like, a lot of the other stuff. And the demo disc... well, I'll, I'll continue after the cutscene. So we're here, we found our parents. You haven't come home for five days, I was so worried about you. What happened to your leg? I broke it because I'm an idiot. I have no idea how he, uh... So apparently this guy's like a professor. His name is Klaus, because he's German, you know. Hello! Rue, the polywog. <laughs> you know, your daughter just said that she got mugged by some bandits in the forest. And, you know, you don't even freak out about that or anything, but you get all, like, inquisitive about this guy. Polly is really amazing. He's a Polly, but he can turn into a person. But usually he's a person and his name is Rue, so I called him Rue the Pollywog. Hold on, honey. I'm getting confused. You know what? That's just because she's a dumb bitch. You know, it's funny. This, like, this mom, I always, like, pictured her having the same voice as Dexter's mom from Dexter's Lab. Like, if you've ever watched that show. Hello, my name is Klaus. Yeah, I live in Corona. That's my wife, Mira. Oh, yeah. Sounds like you helped Elena through a lot of trouble. Thank you for helping her. Yeah. I completely forgot about my daughter. Wow. Parent of the Year award, right? The relic was the only thing on my mind. Relic? Are you looking for the relic? Yes, everybody's looking for the relic. Gotta get me my hands on the relic. So we're gonna team up with these, uh, these nice people. Because they're nice. And we're gonna look for the relic together. So, you know... Oh, such an emo kid, man. He makes emo faces all the time. I swear to God, he is, like, the most emo character. And it's not sir. Just call me Klaus. Or, you know, Doctor. Not like I'm trying to, like, brag about my education or anything like that. But, uh, whatever. If it's okay with you, why don't we look for the relic? To oh, I already explained this shit, game. God damn it. So, um, apparently... Now, this guy's gonna walk funny since he, you know, twisted his leg and stuff like that. Gee, it's so steep. So somewhere down there, there's a path that leads to an atelier. If you don't know what an atelier is, then you're not alone. But apparently it's some sort of magician's workshop. And there's a lot of these things throughout the game. And for some reason, they have to call them ateliers. I guess, uh... And of course, you know, when I, when I played the demo of this game, I was like six years old. So I had no idea what this thing was. Atelier, you know? Anyway... So we're just gonna jump off this cliff, just to, you know, jump off the cliff, because we've survived greater danger. I'll do whatever it takes to get the relic. Because I'm an emo kid. I love how the music, like, stops there when he's like, I gotta do whatever it takes! Um, so yeah, if you're not, I don't know, if you're not really digging Rue's emo-ness, the other character, the spunky girl, you know, well, she's a lot different, and the game ends up being much much different when you play as her, so don't uh, don't even worry about that. Now, for some reason in this game, 
I don't know, it's kind of strange because it seems like um, your magic and your health are backwards. Because as you can see, health is blue and magic is red. And it's like in every other game ever made, it's the other way around. And it's really confusing. I figure I should probably also explain, because you notice my health is higher than it was before, but we haven't gotten any like level ups or anything like that. Well, that's because your stats improve in this game. Your health improves by taking damage. Like, the more damage you take, the higher your health goes up. And your magic improves, like, the more spells you cast, the higher your magic gets. So we gotta kill some gargoyles here, because the plot demands us. These guys are kinda cool, I guess. This is really the only place you see them. Well, the, it's not the only place, but you won't see them again for a while. So we turn into a gargoyle, stand across the opposite of it, and we make this magical staircase appear. You know, I think I started to tell a story. We're actually still in the demo section of this game. The demo that I played like a million times as a kid. So this is the, uh, the atelier. I really hope we find some clues about the relic here. Just, just, just... Oh my god! It's a big horsey monster thing. I'm really hoping this doesn't cause my game to lag too much, because the last time I tried recording this, I, uh... It's caused quite a bit of slowdown in the game, but it seems to be going okay so far. So as Ryu, this boss is pretty easy because you can just, like, wail on it. And you can see its health in the, in the bottom right there. Oh, dude, get away from me. Hey! Don't you be doing that. Knockdown in this game is pretty annoying because it takes you a while to get up, and then enemies can, like, knock you down the second you get up. Sorry, I have to move on because I'm an emo kid. So, we can just, uh, go into this thing, then. And, wait, how did you assholes get here? We heard some terrible noise. Wait, didn't you have a fucking, like, twisted leg? Oh, wow. How can you, how can you get here with your twisted leg? Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, it feels great. After you s wait, aren't we, like, a thousand miles in the sky or something like that? So, I guess the excitingness of academia... And the potential of research just, like, caused him to magically get better or something. Which is funny, because actually, like, later in the game, he uses his hurt leg as an excuse for not going around and helping you, because he's a bastard. Klaus, you bastard. So, uh, we're here. We're inside the, the library atelier thing. And yeah, I am going to keep saying the Frenchy French words. So there's a couple chests here, a moonstone, and this is actually, like, the demo would have ended before you, you get inside this building, but you do get to fight the boss, and I thought that was kind of cool in the demo, so. And there's another moonstone. We can evolve our Clefairy and our Jigglypuff now. Those both evolve using moonstones, right? It's been such a while since I've used either of those. Anyway, I guess this video's gone on for quite some time now. Next time on Let's Play Threads of Fate... We are going to, uh, I don't know, investigate this place a little bit more, you know. I can't believe this! Yeah! So good. Alright, see ya, thanks for watching.